Hello, 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 and welcome back to the show that never ends. This is Jim Johnson Reviews the World, and this is another episode of Cook It and Eat It. Now today we got for you something a little bit different. We're going to go across the pond and do our take on an English or Scottish meat pie. We're going to do a mini version using a muffin tin and jumbo flaky biscuits as our crust. Additionally, you're going to need a little over or around a half pound of meat. This is pork. You're going to need half of a large onion or a small onion diced. This was half of a really big large onion. You're going to need W sauce, liquid smoke, brown gravy mix, preferably lowered sodium. That's better for you. A little bit of olive or in this case, grapeseed oil, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, black pepper, oregano, salt-free seasoning if you got it. You also need a medium-sized pot over medium-low heat to start and one solitary bay leaf. First thing you want to do, dice your onion and chunk your meat up, chop your meat up into bite-sized pieces. So we'll do that and we'll be right back to show you how to make Mrs. Lovett's meat pies. Okay, we've gotten our meat all chunked up and our pan is heating and we're going to dump in just a good splash of whatever kind of oil you like. And on your meat, you can trim as much fat off as you want or don't want. I'm using pork today, pork chops that I'd gotten on sale really cheap and then had to freeze because that was, you know, one of those deals where they were on sale really cheap but they had to be used or froze right away. And before I froze them, I actually did put some W sauce and liquid smoke in them just to see what would happen. And it looks like it marinated them a bit, but we're not going to count on that flavor. So anyway, get your pot hot and then just put your meat in your pot. Should be over medium high heat by now. Put that meat in and you just want to go ahead and sear this off for about five minutes and stir it. Get a little brown, a little char even on the outside. All right, this meat's been cooking about five, six minutes. It's got some good brown on it. Nice little bit of char. So we're gonna evacuate that out. Take our pan and leave all these crunchies and everything in here. Just another light splash of oil in. And then we're gonna go in with our onion. And here is our first chance to start adding a little flavor to the party. So just shake in some oregano, a little bit of salt-free seasoning, a little shaky garlic powder. Give this a stir and let this go, stirring occasionally until your onion starts to become nice and translucent. All right, after several minutes, our onions are cooked right to where we need them to be for now. So it's time. Basically from here we're going to turn this into a stew to make our filling for our mini meat pies. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to, and this seems a little weird, but we're gonna add our gravy mix right to our onions. First thing, give that a stir. I'm gonna turn our heat down at this point a little bit from medium high to medium. And that looks pretty nasty, but it's gonna be okay in just a minute. Go ahead and put our meat back in now and stir that all in. And then we want eight drops of liquid smoke four good dashes of W sauce, cayenne pepper to taste, about a half teaspoon or so of garlic, same thing with the oregano, about three quarters of a teaspoon of our salt-free seasoning. Several grinds of pepper, give that a quick stir. And then we need the secret ingredient, the thing I forgot to mention in the opening, which is a half cup of some type of broth. Some type of broth, yes. So this was chicken broth that I homemade and was frozen and I thawed it out. That's a good pro tip for you if you have any ever make broth and you want to get a longer life out of it and don't want a can or anything crazy like that, just go ahead and freeze it. I've been known to freeze it in ice cube trays and then pop it out of the ice cube trays and put those in a bag or in a large container where you can just grab one or two out when you need them. Put our bay leaf in and then we want the same measurement. So half cup of stock, half cup of water. That's going to make our juice for our stewing. And as that thickens and simmers down, that will make our gravy for our finished product. So you want to give this a good stir. Make sure all that seasoning and gravy mix is well incorporated. Got a bunch stuck on the spoon here. And then you want to have this just at a nice low simmer for about an hour or until that meat becomes pretty much fall apart tender. So we're going to cramp our lid on and we'll be back when this is stewed. Incorporated. All right, I almost forgot a couple things. You want to go with just a little bit of hot sauce, probably less than a teaspoon. Again, this is more of a English recipe. Uh, they're not really known for their hot sauce, but I like a little bit of something something. And then you want a couple spoons full of tomato sauce, tomato, uh, not tomato paste, but like a sauce. So I'm just gonna add about three spoonfuls of this homemade tomato sauce. Stir this up one more time, and there we go. Now we can let this cook and simmer away. Again, you just want to let this on a nice low simmer for about an hour. We'll be back. Our meat simmered for about an hour. I actually took the lid off and let it go without the lid on for about the last 15, 20 minutes. Just stuck it back on there before I started recording while I was readjusting things. So as you can see here, we've got a pretty thick 
meat and onion base. Smells really good. So we do want to let this cool down a bit. We're gonna leave that lid off. Uh, in the meantime though, we're gonna start getting things ready to go. So I've put out a piece of parchment paper. We've got our muffin tin. Hopefully for you folks, you have a larger muffin tin and multiple mu muffin tins. This happens to be all I have is a six shooter. At this time, it'd be okay for you to go ahead and turn your oven on. Go with 350 if your oven runs hot and 375 if your oven runs cool, if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and open these up. Yep, there it was, right at the end. <laughs> I know some people find these things popping to be uh, something in the line of ASMR. So I'm just gonna pull out two of these for now and stick the rest back in the fridge. So we're gonna try to find our middle spot the best we can. Open it up, split it. Just do your best to get them in the middle. This one's a little squish on that side, that'd be okay. And then once you've halved them, all right, so we got our biscuits broken in half. I actually more than half them, but we're gonna go back and just put them in half. That's what we've already started doing. Put our dough in. So I'm gonna end up with too much filling because I thought I was gonna be able to get two mini pies out of each biscuit. This dough just wouldn't behave. So we will get one mini pie out of each biscuit. So right now we've got one, two, three, four. Set that aside. And I'll grab a couple more biscuits to half. One, two, I need, I need three halves. So I need a biscuit and a half. All right. Wooden. All right, we got our cups ready. Had to do two takes on that. Uh, it didn't work out quite the way I wanted. So just to back up real quick to make sure in the editing process I got everything we need, you're going to half each biscuit. So each biscuit is going to equal one pie. I originally thought each biscuit was gonna equal two pies. I thought we could get 16 out of the batch. I was wrong. This is a, this isn't off of a recipe. This is just me throwing some things together to make a, a thing. So anyway, I got our cups. So we're gonna, as unmessily as possible, just go ahead, put a spoonful of each in. Don't don't overfill them. And this is the reason that we just slightly cooled off our filling instead of completely cooling it because we did not par bake these these crusts. All right. Well, I think we're gonna have a little bit of leftover filling because we only got two more biscuits to do. So let's get a fork full of this. Take a look at that. See how it tastes, the filling. That's good. Oh, tender pork. Just a hint of heat, just enough heat that you feel it from the combination of the pepper, the black pepper, cayenne pepper, and the hot sauce. Tender pork, tender onions, because we used that lower sodium, but didn't add any salt. It's right on the edge. It's even without adding any sodium to any of this, it's still right on the edge of saltiness. Like it's salty enough. Any more salt would be too much. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and cap these. I'm just gonna press them on the best I can. Try to get a full seal around each one. And these are meant to be kind of humble, kind of, uh, Definitely meant to have a homemade look. So we don't need to worry about getting everything perfect, but we do want to do our best to get a seal around each one. I think this one's gonna be a little bit tough to seal around. Give it a little bit piece, bigger piece of dough so I can push it down in there. Doughier side there, this is a doughier bit right here. So we'll go with it like that. Push it down all around. It's pretty good. Two more for now. Pushing it in first. This is the first time I've done this, if I didn't mention it. It's the first time I've tried to make meat pies this way. I recently saw a proper scratch made with the scratch made dough, scratch made everything, meat pie recipe. And I was like, yeah, I want to try meat pies. I'm Scottish and Irish. So like, you know, didn't, in my own way, I see a lot of recipes and I say, how can I do that my way? Kind of simplify it. I don't have the things to make dough from scratch. They specifically don't have the patience. All right, we're going to need this wax paper again. So let's move it out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to dock this. Hopefully get a couple holes all the way through for steam. And you could also, if you wanted to at this point, hit it with a egg wash. But I'm just gonna stick them in the oven like this. And uh, you know what? We said that 350 to 375 onion, depending upon if it runs hot or cold. And we're gonna come back after they're baked and let you know how long I needed to cook them for to get them to a nice, dark, golden brown and delicious. We'll be back in a little while. And all right, here we have it. Finished mini meat pies. So these took right on, right on just under a half hour in my oven. That was on 375, right smack in the middle of the oven. As you can see, they came out wonderfully. Most of them, all but one, are perfectly sealed. This one didn't quite get sealed, and that's gonna be our tester. These guys have been cooling off for a little over 10 minutes now or so. And I'm gonna cut into this one that was, uh, had the lid come off, and we'll take a look. You hear that crust, maybe? I don't know if it's picking up over my exhaust fan, but that crust had a nice snap to it. it smells really good. It looks pretty delicious. There we go. A little meat pie. Let me uh, test it with my finger to make sure it's not too hot in the middle still. No, that's good. Perfect little pork meat pie. Let's give her a taste, see how it turned out. The crust is perfectly brown and crispy on the outside, even the bottom bit, because I took them right out. As soon as I took them out of the oven, I took them out of the pan, and I put them on this makeshift drying rig here. 
or cooling rig, which is just my splatter shield elevated, and that helped the outside, the whole outside, get a little bit crispy. Delicious, absolutely delicious. I really like the balance between the natural pork flavor and then the onions, the stewed onions, and then you get just enough of that kind of standard brown gravy fl flavor, and then it finishes with a very nice peppery flavor from the black pepper and the hot sauces. Wonderful. You can even make this up and put it on hoagie rolls. Great, it'd be like having exploded or easy pot pie or something. Just wonderful, just wonderful. So this one, you can see after it rose and everything, it had a little bit more room inside, so I could have probably filled them up a little more, but doing six and then two, I couldn't really, you know, I want to make sure I had enough left for the last two. So hopefully you at home, you have more than one muffin pan. If you have a sixer, hopefully you have two sixers, or maybe you have a twelver, and you can do them all at once and then get all your meat in the dough. But that's it, that's that. But home. I want to thank you for tuning in to Cook It and Eat It today here on Jim John's to Reviews the World. And if you like my stuff, feel free to go down below, like, subscribe, and share this with your friends and family to help me grow the world so we can keep making these wonderful videos for you. Also feel free to follow at Jim John's to Reviews the World on both Facebook and Instagram to join the conversation and plenty more topics of food, food, and more food. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. A little more unconventional than normal, but hey, everything on Jim John's to Reviews the World is a little bit unconventional. We'll see you next time, folks. And for me, to you, remember, be weird, be free, and most importantly, be independent.